Today, we're fixing your audio. So in this video, I'm going to go over setting up your microphone correctly, as well as any filters that you want to add in OBS and stuff to get the best sound and quality for your live streams and content creation. I made a similar video to this a year or two ago. However, since then, I've changed a few of the settings that were in that previous video. And also, some of you complained that I was using a very expensive microphone setup, so obviously it was going to sound good. So in this video, I'm using the Elgato Wave 3 instead, which is much more affordable. So first things first, we need to set up the microphone correctly, because if it's in the wrong position with the wrong gain and stuff like that, when you actually add filters to it later on, it's just going to make it sound worse. So ideally, you want to have your microphone either on a stand or on some type of boom arm like this, and then that way you can get the microphone as close to your mouth as possible, preferably about six inches away. I like to ball my fist up like this, and then that's kind of the distance, or if that's a little bit too close, do this kind of shape, and that's the furthest away you should be for your microphone. And now with our microphone positioned correctly, the next thing to do is to set up the input gain, and the input gain is how loud your microphone is before it has any effects or filters on the audio, and the better you set up the input gain, the less likely it is to clip or distort later on down the line. With OBS Studio open, you want to make sure it's picking up the correct microphone and then from there you're going to check that the actual meters are displaying the correct information and to do that you want to go to file settings and then in the audio menu find meters and then change sample peak here to true peak and what that does is basically as you can see this is the sample peak set in here you've got this big red area which would indicate that it's a little bit too loud and it would clip and distort the and that's not true instead if you change it to true peak so watch when i press apply the red bar now becomes much smaller and it indicates that you can have your volume a little bit louder, which makes the meters just easier to read. Now that our meters are displaying correctly, it's time to set up the actual input gain. And the way that I'm going to be doing that is changing the gain dial on my USB microphone. But for you, you might have an audio interface like a Wave XLR or be setting it up in Windows if your microphone doesn't have a gain dial in built into it. But either way, you're going to be setting up the gain outside of OBS Studio before doing any filters inside of OBS. So with your microphone position correctly, start talking at a normal volume that you would like generally just talk to an audience at and then change the gain dial until it hits between this minus 10 and minus 15 on like the OBS meters. Having it at that specific volume means that it's loud enough to kind of hear, but not be too loud that if you get loud, it's not going to clip, which means that when you add filters and stuff in later on, it's also not going to distort and it'll still sound nice and professional. So the first filter we're going to add to our microphone is called a noise gate. And effectively a noise gate just turns off your microphone when you're not speaking into it. So when your audio goes below a certain level, it just stops the signal. And that's great for avoiding like back background noise, fans, loud neighbours, your pets and stuff. If you aren't speaking at the time, then a noise gate will kind of just stop any of that noise coming through. So to add a noise gate to your audio or any filter really, you want to find your microphone on these meters, come to the dot to the bottom, click those, go to filters, press the plus at the bottom of the audio filters, and then add in a noise gate. From here, obviously you can rename it or do whatever you want, but I'm just going to leave it as is for now. And then at here, we're going to put the close threshold all the way down to the bottom and the open threshold at the same as well. So it's at zero. And that should allow us to kind of figure out what level it should be. The best way to figure out what your close and open threshold should be is to basically stop talking for a few seconds while watching your audio meters and then that'll tell you what your background noise is kind of in your room and then you can set your close and open meters based on that volume. As you can kind of see here, my background audio noise was hitting around minus 55, which tells me my close threshold needs to be slightly above that. So I'm going to put my close threshold about five decibels louder than that. So I want to put it at about minus 50 and that means that when my audio goes below this which is hopefully just going to be my background noise all of that will be cut off and then for the open threshold you want to go slightly louder than this so we're going to add on like five decibels on top of that so the open threshold needs to be about minus 40 five or so. That leaves us with these three like options at the bottom we've got attack time, hold time and release time and basically attack time is how quick the closed threshold and open threshold happens. You want this to happen as quickly as possible. So I basically put the attack time as low as possible at around one milliseconds. The whole time is how much it'll stay open for once it has opened. So I like to have my whole time a little bit longer than 200 milliseconds. So I put it around 250. And then finally, release time is actually how long it takes to close down. So I like to have this a little bit longer again to about 200 or so, I think. And that means when the noise gate does kind of shut, it's more of a fade out than a sudden just close. So as an example, when I'm talking like this, you can see the audio moving. But if I stop talking for a few seconds, 
the microphone cuts out. The next filter we're going to add in is a noise suppression though, and this is basically going to cut out any background noise and stuff while we're talking or anything else that's on your room that is just not pleasurable to listen to. So to do the same thing, obviously, you want to go down to the plus button, go to, I've lost it, noise suppression, couldn't find it for a second there, add that in, and then you've got a couple of different options. You might have different ones to me because I've still got an old GPU, but I'll explain in a second. So the options you're going to have are speaks, RNN noise, and then you might have an NVIDIA noise removal if you've got a modern GPU. Anything over a 2000 series, I'm still rocking a 1080 Ti and I really need to upgrade, but anything over a 2000 series might have the NVIDIA noise removal. Ideally, I would use that one because it's going to be the best quality. However, if you don't have that, couple of options. RNN noise is going to be the better of the two options here, but I've heard reports of people's microphones cutting out when they get too loud, because sometimes this gets confused between like loud screams, loud laughter and stuff, and background noise. So if you're getting very loud, or if you're laughing very loud or screaming, and your microphone's basically cutting out, then don't use RNN noise. Use speaks instead, which won't clear up as much background noise and stuff but hopefully it doesn't cut your microphone out when you're getting loud. The next filter we're going to add to our microphone is actually going to be the one that changes the audio the most, and it's called a compressor. And basically what a compressor does is it balances out the difference between your loud and quiet sounds, and that means that you can actually whisper really quietly as well as go really loud, and neither of those will sound like unbalanced and unnatural and just not hurt any of your audience's ears. So to add a compressor in, you obviously want to go to the plus button again, go down to compressor, click on that, and then you're going to be greeted with all of these options, which we're going to change. Here's a quick rundown of what each of these settings does before I give you my specific settings. So a ratio is how much the audio gets compressed by. So currently it's a 10 to one. So that means if your audio is like at a hundred, it will get compressed 10 times down. So then it will come out at like 10% instead of a hundred percent threshold is the volume the audio hits before it gets compressed. So currently it says minus 18 decibels. So everything that's above minus 18 decibels is being compressed down. Attack is how quickly it gets compressed. So currently six milliseconds, super fast. And release is the opposite. So it's how quickly it stops being compressed once the audio has crossed back over the other side of the threshold. And finally, we've got the output gain, which is adding additional volume at the end of this because a compressor makes your volume quieter and then the output gain boosts that back up so that it kind of sounds the correct loudness again. So my settings, I, this is where I changed from last time. I did a little bit of a, a tweak and didn't have a compressor that's as strong as last time. So last time I had a ratio of 5.6 to 1. This time I much prefer having it at like 4 to 1 instead. I think it sounds a little bit more natural and less monotone, less just crushed down and it just sounds better to listen to for long periods of time. Threshold, I actually now like it at minus 18 decibels. I used to have it at minus 20, but same reason, it just sounded a bit too strong previously and I like a more natural balanced sound now. So there's that. And now we've got attack and release and I like this to work as quick as possible. So I put my attack all the way down to the bottom at one milliseconds and then release, not quite at the bottom, but I have it at around 20 Five. Now, if we take a look at our audio meters here, after adding a compressor, we're only hitting between this minus 20 and like minus 15 level on our audio meters. But ideally, we want to be hitting more towards the minus five because that minus five is going to be a great volume for one, not clipping, and two, it's going to be loud, which means you can add music, gameplay, sound effects and stuff underneath us, and it's going to be easier for it to not clash. So if you look at the output gain, currently zero, and you talk like you normally would on a stream or in a content or whatever, and then increase this output gain until it hits around that minus five decibel. So for me, that's going to be around six or so, I think. So for example, if I don't use a compressor on my microphone, whether I'm whispering, or if I move a bit far away, or if I go really loud, all of that audio is going to sound all over the place and not be the best. But if I turn my compressor actually on, if I whisper again, or move away from the microphone, I'll go very loud. All of it should kind of sound balanced and just be a little bit more easier to listen to, especially when you've got audio like music and gameplay and stuff underneath. The next filter we're going to be covering is called the EQ. However, I need to add a caveat kind of warning before I actually show you my settings, and that is EQ is very subjective because every room, every microphone, and every single voice is going to be different. So even though I'll show you my settings, 
you're gonna have to play it around a bit to kind of figure out what works best for your voice. Since making the previous audio video, OBS has added in their own native EQ now. It's very simple, very basic. It's only a three band equalizer, but if you want a really simple setup, this is what you do. So obviously same as all the other filters, you wanna come down to this plus sign, press that and then find three band equalizer. Super simple, you're just gonna have highs, mids and lows, which is effectively treble, mids and bass and all i do for this if you want to keep it as basic as possible is highs i like to increase by like two decibels i decrease mids by two and then bass i increase by about three or so and then that's pretty much the most simple setup you could have for a basic EQ. However, if you want to take your equalization a little bit more seriously, you have to download some VST plugins for OBS so you can customize it all and make it just perfect for your voice. The one that I like to use is called TDR Nova, which I'll leave a link to down below. And this is how I would set that one up. Once you've opened TDR Nova, you're greeted with this page here, which is actually a six band equalizer. You get high pass filter, low pass filter, as well as four other bands to customize all your audio. So starting with the high pass filter, I personally set mine up at 60 Hertz. And I mostly do this because human voices don't really go down that low. They don't really go lower than 80 Hertz. So if I set it at 60, that means I'm going to cut out things like hums, cars driving past, like AC units, stuff like that. So high pass filter at 60 Hertz, great for removing background noise. Then we've got band number one, which I have it as, where we go, 125 hertz, which I increase by two decibels, because that's going to be like the bass in our voice. And I like to increase the bass a little bit because it just sounds a little bit warmer and just fuller and people like the sound of a bassy voice. The next band I have is around 500 hertz and that is actually decreased by two decibels. And the reason I decrease this is because 500 hertz is where nasally sounds kind of live in the human voice. So if I can scoop that out a little bit, that means it's going to be less like grating to listen to over a long period of time. Band number three, I set it at four kilohertz and that's kind of where most of the clarity and our voice is going to live. So 4,000 kilohertz, I increase by one decibel just to kind of boost the clarity in my voice. And that means that it'll actually cut through all of that like other sound that you're having on your content. So like music or sound effects or gameplay or whatever, it'll help to push your voice kind of to the forefront of that as well as sounding clear. The next band is band number four and I have mine set up at around 10 kilohertz and this area is what makes the microphone or the audio sound very crispy where earlier on the lower frequencies sound clear and cut through music this one is that crispy sound which sounds great however i only crease it by about two decibels because if you go too high on this one you're also going to increase the sibilance in your noise and if you don't know what sibilance is that's kind of the t s kind of sound you'll hear that it'll basically sound like bacon cooking uh, but if you increase this frequency a little bit too much you'll end up pushing that to the forefront and it just won't sound very good. And lastly, we've got the low pass filter, which I have mine set up at around 20 kilohertz. And I have it up there because, well, the human voice doesn't really go higher than that. And that means by having the low pass filter there, I will cut out a lot of like electrical whines and high pitch noises and frequencies and stuff, which is in my room, like fan noise. Because obviously in fan noises, you get the, the deep mm, hum, but also sometimes there's like a whiny sound in with that as well. So hopefully by having a high pass filter and a low pass filter, I'm cutting out a lot of the frequencies, which I don't like in my audio. As you can hear right now, this is the audio we had at the start of the video. There's no effects or filters or anything on this. And while it sounds pretty good, it's not the most balanced, clear audio you've ever heard. Because if I start moving around like this, it's going to kind of drop out, go quieter, and not be ideal. However, if I add all the filters in that we just did in OBS, this is now what the audio sounds like, which is much clearer, sounds more professional, it's louder probably. And also, if I start moving around like this, you can still hear me relatively clearly. However, as good as this audio is, it's still missing one crucial component, and that is a filter which helps to avoid blowing out the eardrums of your audience if you get very loud or scream or shout, and that is a limiter. So same as all the other filters we've added to the microphone, you want to go into OBS, find the microphone filter menu, press plus, add in a limiter here, and then within this menu, change the threshold to minus five, because that's what we roughly set our audio volume to before, and that's going to be nice and clean and not clip or distort if it does get that loud. For release, 60 millisecond is more than fine. However, if you want a slightly better limiter, one that will actually increase the overall output volume of your microphone while still avoiding any distortion, check out this video here. It's a good one, I promise you, and I'll see you all in the next one.